Bella Vista Designs is Southern California's premier audio and visual company, specializing in decorative lighting, draping, and sound for your upcoming wedding or event. Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Fun Sparkle Drama. I am Nico Cervantes, and I am here with my lovely and beautiful and gorgeous co-host, Ms. Nina Lafuente. Thank you. How are you, honey? I'm great. It's going to be New Year's. I Happy know, New Year's. Cheers. Happy New Year's, almost. Almost. End of 2014. Yes. Oh, my uh, God. Which is... <laughs> Another cheers. Cheers to that. Bang. What I love about New Year's <laughs> is the fact that we get to, like symbolically restart and refresh yes. and regroup. Oh my God, I love that. You know, like I, I'm such I a nerd. I kind of do that every Monday though. Do you? <laughs> no, but I mean, it's kind of like the big Monday, you know, like New Year's Day is like the day that we get to really start something that we've been thinking about, that we've wanted to do, our intention, you know, like start it fresh. Yeah. It feels fresh. See, I, that doesn't happen for me because Monday I'm a disaster. Right. And then it takes me like Friday till I finally get my shit together. Right. And then it's Monday again. Right. No, so, I mean, I say that jokingly yeah. Monday, but for me, Monday, it's like the beginning of the school week. It's the beginning yeah. of the well, work week. Well, you're a mom. Week. Yeah, totally. So you have to like get it together. Yeah, totally. I just have me and my disaster self. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the end. But 2014, we're ending it. And I think for a lot of people, I mean, it's been a pretty intense year. A lot of people yeah. that I know have had a lot of loss. They've had um, a lot of personal change, you know, uh, personal conflict, stuff come up. People yeah. are really, what I see just in my friends and clients and family, it's like people have kind of really been doing stuff this year that is kind of looks to me like finishing up stuff. I don't know. Yeah, and like a lot of career changes I've seen yeah. in my friends and family. Yeah, totally. People that are um, kind of reevaluating what they do for a living yes. and how they spend I've had, their hours yes. of the day. I've had like three clients totally quit their jobs and start something new, like yeah. it, which has been in the total opposite of what they were doing, like you know, becoming a personal trainer after working in an office or something yeah. like that. So, exactly. Yeah, good. I, I know. I think it's been an awesome year. And it's been a hard year, but it, it's been an awesome year because it's kind of gotten us to where we are now. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of us, I feel like a little bit more complete in a sense, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. just with me and kind of gathering everything. So by the time the new year comes, you know, I feel like I'm ready to kind of start fresh and kind of, it's going to be a kick-ass year, I think. You think? Okay. So really let me do. let me ask you this. Yeah. Have you... Because we all like make our New Year's resolutions, but we're rewording it now. We're calling yeah. it intentions. Which I love, but yes. I'm stealing that from Oprah. Totally. It takes the pressure off. Yeah. <laughs> but also, like, have you, what of past um, New Year's resolutions have you actually completed? Like, do you know? And I'm asking you this because I know what I've done. So, <laughs> well, I, I haven't done many of them. Right. But I think it's because I've called them a resolution and I right. haven't called them an intention. Right. Where, with an intention, you've got to prepare for it. Right. You know, you've got to take the steps you need to take to get to that, make that intention happen. Right. Because that's the whole point of it. And I think that's why I love our new intention versus resolution. So I haven't, it's funny, as soon as I kind of make it a resolution, it doesn't happen. Right. Well, you like what I've done in a, the past few years is make a list of things that I want to have happen in the new year. So I mm -hmm. guess that's an intention without calling it an intention. So... One thing I did last year was travel more, and so I did that this past year. Yeah, like I went on a, I went to Mexico. You did. I did the Europe trip. I went somewhere else, and that's the only thing that I can really, yeah, you know, look back and go, oh, okay, I totally did that. But that to me really works. Like to make a list. Okay, I want to save this percentage of my income, or you know, and it is kind of an intention list. Like my intention is to by July to go on a big trip or to, I don't know, go to the gym 10 times or, you know, something. So it takes a little bit of that pressure off like, oh my gosh, I've got to lose 10 pounds or I have to not eat sugar or, you know what yeah. I mean? It's like, oh, I'm going to eat salad once a week. Well, now <laughs> since we're calling it intention, what are the things that you're going to do to prepare for those, to complete the intention? Oh, I don't know. Let's start with, what was your first one? 
You, you Tra would, take a trip before July? Yeah. Like, what are you going to do so you can take a trip? Because well, I you and I are both workaholics. I know. And also, like, I have to figure out, is that trip, like, solo? Or is it with my child? Or is it to visit my other child? So that's what I have to get clear on. Or I think if it's, it's with a man. Oh, goodness. Maybe that, <laughs> <laughs> maybe that should be my intention. No, but it's. I think it's also really good to get clear on what your intention is. Like, yeah. I'm going to take a trip by myself to this area of the world by this date. And yeah. then it kind of gives you a broad sense, but something to focus on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, or, and like start preparing with work and yeah. and you're p putting together your life and simplifying things. You're able to leave and you're able to take the time off to yeah. go. Yeah, or just even like getting online on your iPad in bed at night and you know seeing what does it cost to go to Belize or yeah. wherever all Sometimes. the single men are. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. What about you? We should ask. I I think the intention for me is to just like complete my life as a whole. You know, I feel for so long that my life has been torn up into so many different pieces that like, I haven't put the pieces together. Like work, family, friends, personal life. Yeah, like, love, life, that, love life, body okay. image, everything around that has been not connected. So I feel like really connecting all those pieces okay. is going to be something that I really want to do this year. Okay. That's good. That's good. That's yeah. a good thing. So, yeah. so you want to connect the dots. Connect the dots. So, okay. you know, I'm not like, I swear, I would, I would relate it to when you dump out a puzzle, which drives me crazy to see, like in the box, you dump it out and all the pieces are kind of all over the place. That's uh, how I feel. So okay. to put the puzzle together is my oh, intention. I love that. Yeah. Cheers to your Cheers intention. Cheers to that. We'll drink to it. Well, we're going to have to. have to drink to it. Oh, sorry. Uh -huh. Or else it's so, bad luck. Right? Oh, yeah. And yeah. you have to look each other in the eye. Too yeah, eye cheers. contact. Yeah. Um, well, we're going to have to ask Miss Anna Chapman, who yes. is here today. Yes. She's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Tell us. You, well, because both of us know Anna really well, and we're so excited she's here. But why don't you tell us who Anna is? And Okay. Well, Anna Chapman is someone whom you and I, I think I introduced you to Anna a few years ago. Was that me? We went to Paradise Found together. And we both had a reading from her one day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then that was years ago. And just throughout the years, we've gotten to know her. And So um, tell everyone who she is and what she does. Anna Chapman is an amazing woman who um, has an amazing gift that, she, to me, she has um, turned that into a service for those of us who may need um, some guidance. And so she's an intuitive She's got a lot of talents, and she's just a, a warm-hearted, wonderful, sweet person that yeah. is here to help us. And she, um, ha and it, my experience with Anna is that um, when, I, when I lost my sister last year, mm -hmm. um, she specializes or she is has a lot of um, experience in connecting with people that have died or crossed over. Yeah. And so one of the times that I had with Anna was um, her connecting to me with my sister and that was powerful and no one can tell me that what went on in that room wasn't what was because yeah. there was stuff that Anna brought up that only um, that only myself or my sister would have known so and then on a lighter note I've had um, other uh, times with Anna where we've gone over astrological aspects and that's yeah. been fun and interesting. And then, um, you know, and then I think she's done, like, she's just very broad in what yeah. she does. And well, I'd like to hear, yeah. Well, she explains herself as, like, she kind of does whatever she needs to do for people. Yeah. Which I love that. You yeah. Because she's they, not going to sit there and be like, oh, I'm the Long Island medium or I'm the this person. I yeah, like that she in. doesn't uh, give herself a, a name, you know. But yeah. um, so she has a lot of talents. She does. And, yeah. you know, like people can go to her for um, astrological readings. They mm -hmm. can go to her as a clairvoyant. Yeah. They can go to her uh, for a tarot card reading. Yeah. For people that Those are kind of. Those are amazing. Yeah. For people that are just kind of getting into yeah. that part of the world. Because it is a different aspect of thinking, I would say. Is that yeah. a lot of some people, you know, are a little closed minded. Yeah. Um, to the idea of it. Yeah, it's just kind of like having blinders like this and maybe opening them a little yeah. bit like that. And I think Anna is a wonderful help and um, person that helps us open our blinders a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, we're going to have Anna here today. I know. I'm so excited. And <laughs> so stay tuned. Anna Chapman is next right after the break.
Bella Vista Designs is Southern California's premier audio and visual company, specializing in decorative lighting, draping, and sound for your upcoming wedding or event. Welcome back, everyone. And if you are just tuning in, you are watching Fun Sparkle Drama. I'm Nico Cervantes, and this is our New Year's uh, 2015 episode. So uh, here we have the beautiful, the amazing, the insightful uh, Anna Chapman. Thank you, Nico. And I want to thank Nina for her wonderful comments. That was really very sweet of you. Thank you. And I've brought my cards tonight because I want to do a little reading for you for 2015. Oh, I can't so, wait. Yeah. You know, I adore you. <clears throat> I adore you. And you have helped me through some of the darkest times, I think, in my life. And because not only do you do astrology and you're a clairvoyant and a psychic in, you know, in layman's terms, but you are very insightful. You're very insightful. And you've got such a positive perspective on life. So I just want to thank you for being here, and I'm really excited to for our conversation and to kind of in depth and get to know you a little bit better. Then every time I go to you, I'm always talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> so tell everyone first. Now you do astrology readings. You don't consider yourself an astrologist, but you do astrology readings. Mm -hmm. Tell tell the people out there what astrology is. Well, astrology basically is a blueprint. It's like a map um, that we come in with. And it can be a real um, profound guide for the journey here. Mm -hmm. And um, so that every aspect of it can be examined in detail if, if, you, <laughs> if you choose to do that. But it really can be a very helpful guide in examining what your challenges might be here and also where you overcome your challenges and what your successes can be and are. And the potentials you have for, for success, etc. And it has to do with the planets, correct? Right. And how it connects to us energetically. Yes, absolutely. And so, in a natal chart, um, you look at the ascendant, which is positioned um, at the time of your birth, the sun, the moon, and then the aspects between um, all the planets, which just give you a very good indication of. Um, what you can expect in yes. your life. Yes. Which we'll be talking about a little bit later. Yes. Um, so tell me kind of, you do a lot of past life regression. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about, about past life regression because I don't think we've ever done that together when I've we gotten a reading not. from you. We have so not. tell everyone what past life regression is. Past life regression is um, simply um, a form of hypnosis. Mm -hmm. um, asking the person to journey back to another time that will have significance for them at this time. So generally people journey back to lifetimes that might be creating, that might have been very traumatic, mm -hmm. um, that might be creating impediments for their forward movement in this lifetime. So generally when they see what happened in that lifetime, it brings them a lot of clarity in this moment yeah. um, that really helps them resolve issues that seem to have no basis in reality. So it's like, aha, I see. Yeah, this well, is why, is. you yes. know, I uh, drink too much. Or <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> this is why I don't get along with my mother. Yes. No, I get along with my mother. I love her very much. But, you know, those are just an example yes. of that. Um, how interesting is that, you know? This is, why I, this is why I'm afraid of elevators and small spaces. Okay, and, and what, what's the reason behind that? Because Well, you might have been sequestered in a sarcophagus and never came out again. That sort of thing. Oh, I'm sorry. In what Egypt. What was that word you said? Sequestered. <laughs> no, the, before that. Uh, Just you might have been sequestered in a sarcophagus. Yeah, that word. Oh. <laughs> what does in, that word mean? In Egypt. I'm so sorry. It was, it was like a coffin that... Oh. Yeah. Okay. And um, so the the, far, the like pharaohs were well, they were buried in sarcophagus. Okay. And um, sorry, I didn't know that. <laughs> in Egypt, there were a lot of initiations that took place, and part of it was to be in a sarcophagus okay. and to not have fear. 
Okay. <laughs> See, I learn something new every day, and this is why I love having you here, even though that's not what we're talking about. Um, so you've got this amazing gift, Anna. You've got this amazing gift with people, and um, you're, you've got such a light. When was it when you realized that you had this gift and you could share it with the world? Um, well, that's it actually uh, took place over many years. Um, so that when I was younger, a lot of interesting things would happen. Um, but where I grew up in Toronto, there wasn't a lot of support for um, people who were clairvoyant or psychic or had unusual experiences. So one really kept a lot of that information to themselves, particularly if you had a fear of um, people thinking that you were crazy, So, yeah. which, which I had, and a lot of other fears that went along with that. So I pretty much kept it to myself for a long time, but when I moved to California, um, I was in my early 40s and um, had quite an awakening that was due to listening to a piece of classical music. Um, and it changed everything completely. I began to see that I could use the gift as a service to people, and that really inspired me enormously to overcome my fears and be more visible with with my gifts. So tell me a little bit about what that experience was like, hearing the music and, and oh. the, the revelation. The music was a piece of classical music by Alexander Scriabin, who's a Russian composer. And when I first heard it, um, I thought that surely he must be mad because the music was extremely dissonant. Um, and I thought, mm, I should give it a second chance. And the second time I listened to it, um, the earth moved. I just was hearing a whole different level of um, where the music was coming from. Mm. And it really shifted something for me. Um, and I realized that I wanted to live my life where this man composed his music from because it had nothing to do with this reality. Oh, wow. And my life really changed rather rapidly. Um, I started hearing a lot more things, seeing things in other dimensions, just really a lot opened up after that. So did you feel connected to him or the music? The music. Wow. Yeah. He was an extraordinary human being also. Yeah. Um, he really... Uh, had a vision of a whole different reality. Definitely. He totally tapped into that really very easily. Um, and it's really evident in his later music. He composed with the fifth harmonic, which is the same harmonic that Tibetan monks chant in because it connects us to source. Wow. So. Have you ever, when did he die? Mm. Or pass on, I should I say. I think Sorry. he died in the late 1920s or the early 1930s. Okay. And he died very young and his death was very um, mysterious. So there were those who thought that perhaps he might have been, um, well. Murdered? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the tea I like to know. <laughs> what was the drama behind that? Yes. Um, how interesting and how yeah. amazing. So he yeah. was a person with probably a lot of layers that Many layers. That he left many, so much behind layers. when he left. Yes. He, he had a vision for creating a symphony that would include um, experiences that would apply to all the senses. And he wanted to do this in an enormous stadium. He wow. was quite a visionary individual. I love that. I know. He well, was awesome. I am going to yes. ask you a favor. I told you to bring your cards today because I would like you to do a 2015 reading since we are yes. celebrating the new year. Yes. Um, will you do that for us? Sure, of course. Okay. And explain to the yes. tarot card experience and, um, and everything that it entails. Tarot cards are a wonderful symbolic representation of what goes on in here um, that we may not be aware of. And so a tarot reader simply is reflecting to you what's already present. Mm -hmm but wants recognition. Yeah. I love that. So it's all there, and as soon as you see the cards, okay, then you know perfect. what's going on. So I'm just going to get you to choose three cards out of this. Okay, and you were shuffling them, that's what you were doing? Yes. Okay. With energy, or how do you shuffle? Um, I just kind of randomly shuffle, but... 
who knows what else takes place in yeah. there. Yeah. Well, yeah okay. You want me to pick three all together, or? Just three. Okay. And then we'll. Oh, you know yeah, what? That that was a hitchhiker, so that's I know, going down that's with a it. We want that one too. <laughs> we want that one. Yeah. Um, and I went back to this one. This is my actually my first choice. I okay. Was, okay. Cool. There you go. Okay. Awesome. So, the first card is the Queen of Wands. Okay. Let's Queen show the Queen of Wands. Queen of Wands. And queens are the active feminine principle, which is um, more of a container, more of a support system, and usually shows a lot of sensitivity. Okay. Wands are fire. They're our passion. Um, it's the highest of the four suits, which starts with pentacles, which is earth. Um, so there's a lot of passion here. There's a lot of conviction. There's a lot of intuitive wisdom. And we mm. see the little black cat. Yeah. And this represents your intuition. Um, the fact that she sits so proudly in her throne is an indication that she's very highly respected and people come to her seeking advice. Now oh. she would be the kind of person that is has her own show and interviews people. Yes. Perfect. Well I love queens and I love wands so yes. perfect. <laughs> and so this is the present situation, the first okay. card. The second card Obviously. <laughs> the second card is what needs to happen. Mm -hmm to take you from here to the third card, which is the end result. Okay. So this is the Six of Pentacles. Six of Pentacles. Um, we see here that there's an individual who's giving to these two waifs that are here. And he also has a scales um, in his hand, which represents balance. So this individual is very good at giving. When mm -hmm. this card shows up, however, there's an indication that the person is in a place where they might want to be open to receiving. So I would say that you are quite a giving individual and perhaps this year is all about you being open to receiving based on how much you've given in the past. Yeah, definitely. And then the third card is the Ten of Cups. Tens are endings, culmination, um, cups are our emotions. And so this is the end of a way of being on an emotional level, which means that 2015 represents a whole new beginning for you in terms of your emotional expression. So the kind of expression you're doing this evening, for instance, would be a whole new venture for you, but also on a more intimate level in relationship, a whole new cycle of experience for you. Wow. Those are three great cards. Yes, they are. Um, yes. So, and I agree with all of those. It's funny because I, well, I love the Queen of Wands, of course, but um, especially this card because I don't, I try to do a lot myself. And sometimes I get to the point where people have to help me, mm. you know, because I haven't asked for help to begin right. with. So I love that I chose that card because that was yeah. one of my intentions that we're speaking of today. It's oh, New Year's good. resolutions um, to have, to, you know, to be able to receive. Um, so also, you know, I have felt intuitive my whole life, but yes. I didn't really know how to, I didn't really know how to connect with it. And as I get older, it's becoming stronger and stronger mm -hmm. to the point where when I meet people, and it usually happens not to the people around me that I know very well, but people when I meet them at first. Now, what would be, if there are other people out there that feel similar, what are, what is your advice to kind of connect to that intuition, that, and, intuition? and move forward with it? Um, in a positive well, way. I really think that all of us are very intuitive. Um, for a lot of people, it's not their primary focus in this lifetime. Um, but if you do feel like you're very intuitive and you want to utilize that, it's just a matter of practicing it. So you might want to choose uh, a tool that resonates with you. Um, tarot cards are wonderful because they're so visual and they're so easy to read what's right here and just practice just ask friends to to show up for you and be willing to sit there as you give them readings um, it's also important to to listen to the difference between the intuitive and the mind so thoughts coming in are very different 
than your intuitive nature and you want to become familiar with which is which. Yeah. And not ignore those signs of that your intuition is working for you. Some people just tend to, to yeah. brush it off. No, it's funny. I've been in situations that have happened and I got that strong inkling at first. You know, that really strong and I just assumed, oh, what do I know? Right. You exactly. know, <laughs> exactly. you know, what do I know? Why that's not I'm overreacting or I'm, and then it happens. Yeah. So I'm like, why didn't I just listen to myself to begin with? So you want to really pay attention to those times when you notice that, yes, it did happen mm -hmm. and honor yourself for this gift rather than thinking that you're just making it up or, you know, that it can't be that it can't be something that would be true or real. Yeah. What is your strongest connection um, that you've had with the with somebody in the past life? I mean, sorry, not the past life that has passed on into what do we call that? Um, the other, the afterlife. Just uh, passed on to the next experience. I love the that. The next level of experience, because really we dropped the body, but we didn't drop the mind. Yeah. So we still are experiencing. Um, things that we were here to work on. The strongest, one of the strongest uh, connections I have with somebody who's crossed over is a young man that um, that died at the age of 25 in a motorcycle accident, and I was channeling him for several years for his for his family, and we have a very very strong connection, and it brings tears to my eyes because I love this young man that I never met in oh, wow. in real life and he's just an incredible gift on the other side he's done wonderful things like assisting children who cross over um, to feel safe and um, um, and just introducing them to a whole different level of experience and he does a lot of wonderful things in terms of um, reprogramming the grid here yeah is that so crazy yes. I literally got the chills when you were talking about yes. that yes and uh, and it's so much it's so nice to think that we're not done here when we leave you know yes. this is really just the beginning and I think that's really wonderful um, if you could say one thing about 2015 uh, that you're excited about okay that we can tell everyone one um, intuition of what 2015 has to offer well 2014 was a year of challenges and many people I know or many clients um, really were experiencing a lot of um, challenges that were based on our need to let go of things that don't serve us or that limit us and that tends to be difficult for for some of us yeah. um, nevertheless we 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 realize that proceeding does require us to be uh, less attached to things in material reality um, so the number seven which is 2014 is a number of tests and challenges mm -hmm. and so now that we have overcome these challenges we're in a place where we get to reap the rewards for all the hard work we've done and to experience our mastery. And 2015 is the number eight, which is the number of mastery. So there's a lot of success to be experienced in 2015. And that's what I think is going to be very exceptionally wonderful about 2015 is the success that we get to experience. And I love that. I love that we're going to, because we're out of time, but I love that we're going to end on that note because that is really exciting yes, it to be is. successful. It Anna, is. thank you so much for being here. Thank you, You are Nina. amazing and thank lovely, and thank I'm you. so happy that you were able to join us. Thank you, everyone, for tuning into Fun Sparkle Drama. Before we go, we're going to leave you with our 2015 uh, New Year's uh, intentions, not resolutions, intentions. Uh, Nina, why don't you start us off? Oh, great. Thanks. Uh, okay, so my uh, one of my intentions for 2015 is to let go, which is so broad, but I'm going to let go of a few things that only I need, that I, only I know to let go of, and go on more hikes. Anna, what about you? 
Um, well, 2015, more simplicity and no chai latte. <laughs> <laughs> and my intention is to have more patience, practice more patience, not only with myself and my career, but with my family and my friends. So here is to a happy and healthy 2015. Happy New Year, everyone. And let's bring a lot of fun, sparkle drama into the next year. Thanks so much. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.